Hello and welcome to this video where we'll explore how we can import multiple files from a folder and combine them as a single dataset within Power BI. So to explain this feature, we're going to use different Excel files. So as you can see, there is uh, there are about eight different Excel files. We'll just open one of them to explore what data is contained in it. So as you can see, there is a single sheet and it contains sales data pertaining to a specific month. So this is for January. So we have data up till August in the individual files. Okay, so with that uh, cleared, let's go into Power BI and select the option of folder, right? So from get data, we'll click on the more option here and we will have uh, a selection of folder that will be available. So let's go in and uh, make the selection there. So once we have the folder selected, there will be an option for us to browse the specific folder that we need. So there you go. So this is the folder option here. Let's click on connect. So we can now provide the location of the folder. So now, uh, uh, since I know exactly where the folder is, I can just provide it as it is, or you can just click and browse from the, uh, from the computer and select it. Okay, so let's click on okay here. So once this is done, it's basically going to list us all the files that are there in that folder. So you get to see that. So you can see that in addition to Excel files, it's also listing some temporary files over here, something like DS store and all of that. So we'll see that. So the first thing that might come to mind is immediately go and combine the files, but that will not help us achieve the objective. So what we need to do is we need to get to the Power Query editor screen. So for that to happen, we just need to click the transform data button. So let's go in and do that. So once the transform data button is clicked, the Power Query editor will open. So here we need to go through a few steps to get the data combined. So let's go through that. Okay, so as you can see on the right hand side, the apply steps shows the actual source data. So when you say source, it is referring to the folder, right? So as you can see, there's a bit of metadata here, which says content, the name of the file, the extension, and a few more details here. So what we need to ensure is that we are only filtering and selecting the Excel files alone. So the best way to go about doing that is by filtering the extension. So let's go in and do that. So I can uh, deselect any other file type here and ensure only the Excel files are selected. Perfect. So now I've filtered to ensure only the Excel files are selected over here. And then you can also notice that uh, one of these files are repeated over here. So actually that's because um, one of the files is left open. So if you want, you can close that as well, right? So you can close that particular file. Okay. So once that has been cleared, the next thing that you can do is get rid of the things that you do not want. So first thing that you need to identify is under the content section, there's something called as binary. So when I click on binary, I don't see the data itself. I see the file. Okay. So I can see that the file is accessible, but I have not got to a point where I get to see the individual rows. So we need to be able to get to that stage. So what we'll do for now is we'll just select the uh, information that we need. So I'll just select content here and then right click over here and say remove other columns because I've just got the things that I need for now. I don't need anything apart from Excel files. So I'll say remove other columns. Okay. So once that is done, I can see uh, the individual files are now accessible here, right? But I am not able to see the rows. So for that, we need to go and add a new column here. So we're going to add a custom column which will help us see the sheets within these individual Excel files. So let's click on add column, custom column here. Okay, so a pop-up will show up. So over here, we can create a new column, a new metadata actually. So let me just call it data. So you can call it, call it whatever you want. So here in the custom formula section, we will just provide the Excel workbook option and on the right hand side, you will see what columns are available. 
So the content column is what is available. So let's go in and provide that. Okay, there you go. Right, perfect. So we are going to access the contents inside this particular binary files basically. So it's an Excel workbook, right? So let's click on OK. There you go. So now you get to see one more column show up and uh, here it says table. So when I click on each of these tables, I can identify that it basically lists the sheet. So great. So we have got one step further to uh, getting access to the individual rows. So if that identified, we know that the data that we need is under the table. So we'll just select this and remove the other columns. So in the data, you'll see a two-way two arrow. So let's get this uh, two-way arrow clicked. Okay. So we can uh, uncheck this option. Use er original column name as prefix. We don't need that. Click on OK here. Okay. So we've got to the next stage right now. And you can also see that everything that we have been doing so far has been recorded as applied steps. So now we have, if we were to click on this uh, uh, data one metadata over here, under the tables, we can actually see the individual rows. Okay, so we've got to a stage where we are able to see the individual rows. But then uh, we might need to filter it so that we only need information from the sheets because we could also see something called as defined name over here. So let's get the filtering sorted first. So let's do this and let's remove anything apart from sheets. Perfect. So that part is sorted, right? And then you could also see whether anything is hidden as well, you know, uh, so that could also be sorted over here. So you don't want any hidden sheets also to be included. So once you verify that you have all the sheets that you need, the only thing you need to do right now is go through a couple of steps. One is remove the other columns because you don't want any of these metadata to be added to your final data set. So remove the other columns by clicking on data. Okay. Now we have only the data available because you can see that the individual rows are there. So this is the only thing that needs to be combined. So we'll click this uh, two way arrow here. We'll again ensure that this is deselected. Use original column name as prefix as deselected. So you'll also notice that the original column headers are not currently available. We'll be able to uh, get that sorted in the next stage. So let's click on OK here. So now all the rows from all the different files that were available in the folder are now currently accessible. But the row header is not correct. So what we can do is where the rows and columns merge, there's an icon here that we can click and select use first row as headers. So that's all we need to do to correct this. Perfect. So now you can see all the applied steps are there from the source up to the point that we have reached. So next time when we add a new file, it will go through all these steps once again. Okay. So since this is sorted, we can go back to the home tab, click close and apply. So once we are back in the report view, we can actually see that the data set has been imported and the fields are accessible as well. But we definitely need to verify that all the information from the individual files have been imported. So we have a table visualization here and we'll add a couple of fields into this. Uh, we will add months as well as the sales data. So let's go in and do that. So this will help us verify if all the data is being accessed. So there you go, because the first file contained data only for January. So it's only from the remaining files we have got data up till August. Okay, so this basically helps us to understand that fine. So the import, uh, importing different files from a folder works exactly how we wanted it to. So now if we were to add another file into this folder, so let's say we have another uh, file for September, we could add that as well. So I've just added it in the previous folder. So I'm just going to take it right now. So I'm just going to copy this file and put it back into this folder. So let's go in and do that. Okay, so with that sorted, 
uh, I can just refresh this data set to see whether it's reflecting in my visualization. So let's go in and try this. Okay, so what it will do right now, it will uh, inspect the folder once again, it will go through the transform, it will basically go to the Power Query editor steps that we have defined and it will identify one additional file that is there, that additional Excel file which is available, right? So uh, if the steps are correct, it should identify the September file and it should update this data set right now, right? So in a few seconds, we should be able to see the data for September. So I can also see that the rows have been added, but there you go. So we can see that the data has got reflected over here. So this is the process to be followed when you want to import multiple files from a folder. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and we are able to follow the instructions clearly. Uh, to make this experience a little more easier to understand, I have shared a link to the specific set of files that I've used in this video. So I hope you will be able to practice them with those files. Okay, so till I meet you in the next video, it's bye from me.